Okay, we are going to get started. Uh, so, I have a microphone up here. Uh, can you hear me without the microphone? How about you in the back? You alright? Okay, uh, so uh, my name is Dave Coble, as I said before. I'm the Health Commissioner for the Lorain County General Health District. Uh, I also have Jill Liss, the Director of Environmental Health, with me. Bob Gord, who's the camp inspector, who comes out and he's a sanitarian that takes a look at the camp. And then back there on the camera is uh, Justin. He does a lot of work in our wastewater section. So uh, today, really, the reason we wanted to have this meeting is we want to, is as you heard in the letter, um, we really we've had a concern that's been going on for quite a while, and we wanted to make sure you guys were all aware of what was going on, so that you can make some smart decisions and kind of and nothing strikes you too surprisingly. So. Uh, what I'm going to do today is, first I'm going to go through kind of a chronology of how we even got here. Why are we even at this spot? And then what, you know, maybe we're thinking about next, what are the next steps? And then, uh, and then I'm going to open it up for questions. So really it'll be about 10 minutes and then I'm just going to have every question you can think of and we'll try to answer them as best we can. Okay? Okay. So I even have notes because, you know, it's been that long. Okay, in 2008 is when this actually started. 2008, Chuck Allen from the Ohio EPA and John Zabo from our department uh, witnessed evidence of illegal dumping on the grassy strip in Ashland County. So right behind your, your place, there was a grassy strip there, and clearly someone was dumping sewage on that grassy strip. So about two years later, there was an official complaint from, the, uh, from a resident to Ohio EPA. That was in 2010. And, the, and it said that the owner was pumping out trailer toilets and, and other, uh, other uh, waste and dumping it on the ground in the airstrip over the border in Ashland County. So that brought in Ohio EPA. Bart Ray from Ohio EPA and Chuck Allen of Ohio EPA investigated in 2011 along with our sanitary Bill Allison who used to be out there. Uh, and then in 2011 in our campground inspection we said, we told Mr. Sears that um, you need to have a licensed pumper actually pump up the waste and actually take it to a sanitary landfill like you do with a septic tank. <coughs> I'm sorry, a sanitary sewer uh, plant. And, so, and also the EPA sent a letter to discontinue illegal dumping. That was in 2011. 2012, our campground inspection uh, states that if a hauler is on call and the hauls, when the haul sewage is needed. We had no records <coughs> of this hauler and we never got a pump slip from a hauler but at least we were told there was a pumper now involved, and that pumper, who was a legal pumper, would be taking care of things. So in 13 and 14, Mr. Sears said that he was using a legal pumper, and we, even though we didn't have any pumping receipts, we couldn't find any evidence that he was still going over the border and dumping stuff onto the, onto the, uh, um, onto the property in, in, in Ashland County. So uh, in 2015, the US EPA sent a letter um, ordering him to discontinue the illegal dumping. And so we tried to, as part of that, we tried to verify, does, is there a registered hauler that's pumping out your guys' tanks and pumping out the, the, um, the holding tanks that were associated with the bathrooms and the, and the, and the showers, and, and were they being taken to a sanitary landfill? We couldn't find, there was no, there was never any receipts, we couldn't find a pumper's name or nothing. So in 16, again, you know, during this whole time we keep saying you got to have a legal pumper. You can't just you can't just pump this stuff out and go dump it somewhere. You have to take it to the appropriate place. In 16, our campground inspection again, we requested the legal, the license hauler, and the receipts. We still weren't getting any pumping receipts, and then also one of the holding tanks of one of the shower houses was starting to collapse. Okay, so that's the one you've seen that's one of them that's been closed this whole time. Now, of course, okay, so there's two pieces of the puzzle here, right? One, we're worried about water, you know, creek, you know, the creeks and the, and the lake and a variety of other ways that things can get uh, polluted. The other one is, I don't want any little kid falling in some hole and drowning on your campground. And so, at that moment, we said you need to close that off and seal it and get, and get it taken care of. That was in 2016. So at the end of the season last year, we said, listen, you're going to need to make some serious changes or you're not going to be open. And so instead, what we did, again, we were almost in this same spot we're in now, but we said, listen, we'll have an informal hearing in May before we issue your license this year. And you can give us a plan of how you're going to handle this 
so we don't have people in, in danger. But then also there's no leaking, there's no sewer or water or anything going into the, the wrong place. So we had an informal hearing in May of 17 here. Mr. Sears actually got a contract with uh, Blake Sanitation, and then he said he'd fix the hole right away near the tank that was breaking. Uh, and then he'd be also begin to use the shower and the bathroom holding tanks as a way to pump out your tanks, and he put it in those, and then when the hauler came, they'd come and suck everything out and off it would go, right? And so Blake's was the new, the new one that was going to happen. So on July 14th, we went out, and the hole still wasn't fixed. And so uh, Mr. Sears said he'd be doing it within the week. Um, but then he all, we also noticed that the tanks that he was using for holding tanks, they were all made of cinder block, and they had cracks, and they were starting to leak. And so the problem with using that is that, well, you can't really store stuff in there if it's going to just leak out anyway. And so uh, on the 26th, the week later, we came back out. Still nothing, but still it wasn't prepared. And then we looked at bathroom number five, and we saw a big crack, and it looked like that one was going to collapse. Again, remember, the difference between leaking, which is a problem for us, and collapsing, and you're standing in a shower, and you collapse and drown in your own, you know what, there's a big difference. So we closed both of those bathhouses right away. They've been closed ever since, so that's a good thing. August 10th, the, again we went out, repair store weren't done. There was mosquitoes breeding in the tanks, there was sewage in the ditch, there were, there were the cinder, all the cinder block tanks were starting to look pretty bad, and we were worried about them starting to collapse. So we've gone through this whole summertime, and, and there's been this opportunity to get all this stuff done, and it just wasn't getting done. So now we were in a boat, the same boat we were in last year, where we don't want to close in the middle of the year, now you guys all have to leave. Because if we close that camp, you're done. You cannot live there. You cannot stay there. And so what we started to talk about is, well, at the end of this season, if this stuff's not taken care of, we're probably going to look at doing a board action and suspending the license until next year's start, until next year's season. And if things aren't fixed, it's not going to open next year. So, of course, this made us kind of think through, well, what does that mean? And the first thing we thought of was, what about the residents? What if they don't really know this is going on? Now, we had seen some communication from Mr. Sears, and I mean, they had told you some things were going on, but not really all that serious. And so that's when we said, we're gonna have, we owe a letter to the residents to at least have a meeting and talk about what's going on, because if you find out in May, when you show up for, your, for the next campground year, that you can't be there, you're going to have to get your, all your stuff out of there. And so that could, obviously, you can imagine how difficult that could be. So now, I'm a glass half full guy, okay, so I'm still trusting that this is going to get done, but if it doesn't get done, I'm telling you right now, it will not, you will not be able to open next year, okay. So, after we sent the letter, uh, Mr. Sears and his attorney contacted us and said, hey, we'd like to have a meeting, so we said, great, they came in, we had a meeting, he said that they did finally fix the hole, I guess, a couple weeks ago, and showed us a picture, so I assume the one hole has been taken care of, no one's going to drown in it. Um, and so, so then the big piece was, okay, well, so how, what's the plan moving forward? Uh, Mr. Sears and his attorney kind of said, well, how about if you don't suspend the license at the end of the year, and we'll just, just if we don't get it done by the off-season, then just suspend it then. Now, my problem with that, I, I don't really, it doesn't really matter, no one's there anyway, frankly, from October 15th till, till next May, no one's going to be there. But my concern is, you guys still have to know what's going on, because if this stuff doesn't start getting fixed soon, there's no way it'll be done by, the, by next spring, because again, it's going to be wet in the spring in January and February. There are some options. Here are the main problems. Here are the main issues, and, and we kind of talked through this in this meeting. Uh, so, one, he's not required to, produce, to provide showers for you. That is not a requirement of the campground rules. But if he provides them, they can't be like the ones you got now. So, uh, he can get rid of those completely. He can bring in mobile ones. He could do a lot of things like that. Uh, as far as sewage, he has to have a certain amount of either portable restrooms based on the amount of population that's in the park, or he needs a, a fully functional restroom. Uh, again, those ones that he's got now are these old cinder block tanks, and they're all leaking. His holding tanks out front that he's using when he pumps your stuff out now, he puts it in those holding tanks, those are okay. We can't verify that they're leaking. It doesn't seem like they're leaking. We think they're okay. But the bottom line is, there needs to be a plan to address this. And so these, remember, these tanks, a lot of this stuff was built 60 years ago. And so this idea that it would hold up this long, I'm not surprised it held up as long as they have. So 
So there needs to be a plan going forward. Mr. Sears and his, and his attorney have said that they have, they're, they're going to put together a plan and they're going to have this ready to go and we're going to be off and running. I, I hope that is the case. I will say this though, if that doesn't happen, the park cannot open next year. So that license will not get issued. And I, so I talked to my board a little bit last night and said, hey, listen, next month we're going to have a kind of a formal hearing and discuss this with, you know, Mr. Sears and his, uh, and his attorney and whoever else shows up and kind of, you know, just talk through in general how do we want to handle this and decide whether to suspend the license and, and then with the hopes that it'll all get fixed and then it'll just get unsuspended and off we go. Or do we wait a little while or however we want to work that out. But either way, when, the, when I talked to my board about what was going on, they were like, hey, is anyone in danger out there right now? And so as long as those two collapsing tanks are not being used, no one's in danger. So I'm okay with that piece. Uh, but the bottom line is all those tanks, almost all those tanks, probably all of them, some of them we can't verify, but are leaking. And they're going into the lake, which I know a lot of you guys are you know, spending some time around and in, and your kids may be. Uh, and, and then again the creek, and again not the, everything has to be pumped by a licensed hauler, which it appears is happening. Uh, although one of the one of the pieces we looked at was the volume that they're pumping seems like less than what your normal volume would be. But again, we can't. It's hard to verify that. So as long as you have a legal pumper, we're okay with that, and they take it to a sewer plant. That's the kind of the overall of what's going on. Um, the US EPA and the Ohio EPA are kind of taking a back seat to find out what happens. They have issued those orders, but they're not pursuing legal action at this point. Uh, I don't think they will as long as some satisfactory thing comes out of this and that no longer is a pump truck sucking stuff out and driving over the border and dumping it onto that field. Uh, so I think as long as that doesn't happen anymore, that there won't be a problem. So that's it. That's, that's, the, that's everything that we know. I'm happy to answer questions and talk about what we're going to do. I, I, I know Don's here, and uh, hopefully I've kind of, uh, you know, talked about the plan accurately uh, of what we're going to do moving forward. Um, again, I, I, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, so I'm hoping that everything's going to work out great and you're all going to have a nice great summer again next year, uh, and that's certainly what I'm looking for. Questions? Yes? You speak of the plans that you're organized with Don and everything, but what are the actual due dates and deliverables? Have you laid out when you expect specific actions to be done, like when are whatever corrective actions are being made? Is there a timeline that you're expecting so that come May, when we all want to come back, we already know ahead of time that he's been meeting his goals? Yeah, so so the communi that communication piece, uh, you know, like letting you know exactly what those timelines are, here's the, the bottom line. He has to have um, either temporary, like a you know, like a temporary sewage and, and a showers if he wants to have them, or like a like a portable uh, toilet kind of scenario, or he has to repair what he's got, and that has to be done prior to opening, for sure. He does not have to have showers. He could just eliminate the showers and not do that and worry about that later. He would have no showers at your place, but uh, he doesn't legally have to do that. So there are some specifics he'll need to do. They, uh, they have said that they would like to put together a, um, an actual plan of what that will look like. And when that happens, I, I would like to see Don share that with you on what that plan is. It will be a public record the day it happens, and so you can for sure get it from us. Again, this is why we sent the letter, because we want to make sure you're getting that information so that you don't show up in April and May and say, hey, nothing's been done. So, but yes, we'll have exactly what that looks like. When? We are going to allow them to come up with that plan, so that'll be next month. Okay? Yes? If it was suspected that the tank, homemade tanks were leaking into the lake, our understanding is the lake was tested and the water was clean. I'm not sure who tested the lake. Who would that be? Well, there was, there was a pickup truck from your outfit sitting there one day, taking, they were taking a water sample. Oh, that was just the bathing beach area. Oh, you mean for the bathing beach area? Yes. yes. There is not a high bacteria level at the bathing beach area, though. I, do we have that online, or do you have? It is. Yeah. I know it wasn't an indicator that we had to. We had to put something in, on the. Uh, we had to close the beach, so it was not at that level. So that's a good thing. If the water at the beach is clean, it would seem to me the entire lake should be clean. So 
what, where do you get the water, the seepage from the tank? Yeah, well, it, uh, A, it, uh, I'm not sure if they're, where they're going in and where they're not going in. I know the creek that comes off is where we found sewage, raw sewage in that creek. That goes away from the lake, so that's a good thing. Again, it's still, it's a good thing. It's better than going into the lake. So, uh, again, we're always monitoring that lake to make sure it doesn't get to a certain level. So, that, so at this point, it hasn't, and that's a good thing. Yes? So you're just assuming these tanks are leaking? No, actually, there is, there is definitely evidence of the of some of the tanks with cracks in them and where they're and where so you dug down and looked and see well actually as they started to do this and Justin I don't know how much you, you want to we have pictures of the tanks and what their different conditions are in some of them that are crumbling and what that looks what that looks like now some of them that are just cinder block we don't know for sure are leaking on the back end or not they may not because we can't see them we'd have to dig dig to even look at those whole interest in the yeah now now of course the EPA would say that they're not even legally allowed to be cinder block um, but I think, if to be honest with you, if the only problem was they were cinder block and, and they weren't falling apart, we'd probably be very patient about how to take care of it. And we are, and we still will be patient in terms of anything that's not going to kill somebody by falling in, or anything that if he's got a plan for how to for how to do it all. But like this gentleman was saying here, that they dusted the lake and there's nothing in the lake. But you're saying that on your assumption is that. They're, they're leaking, and it could be going to the lake, it could be down down the stream and going downstream, it could be going wherever. Yeah, and, and really, uh, the the condition of the... Of the more last year, yes. Sure, I don't know, I absolutely, we have not done a dye test to show where the dye would show up. We could do that, um, I, I hope that wouldn't turn your, green, your, your lake artificially green for a little while, but, uh, but we could do that, but again, some of it is, is that worth doing? If there's already a plan for upgrading anyway, and so, so we're putting all of us seasonal people like worrying about having to move and all that. No, that's absolutely not the case. You know, I, you said, do I know that all the tanks are leaking? The answer is no. I do know that some are leaking. I do not know that all. Of them are. Yes. So, all of you know who I am. Okay. Um, I don't. Let me start. My name is Nate. Oh, okay. Nate Moore, I've been to your office. I've met with right. Bill. I've met with David. Uh, let me start by saying that your public records are not quite up to date. There are no reports from your visit on the 14th or on the 27th. With, but there are pictures. But there's no reports associated with those pictures. Your last two inspection reports show violations for land, land application of gray water. But all the records that you have indicate that lakes have been pumping out on a regular basis. They've averaged 16 to 20,000 gallons a month. The alleged dumping on 714, they, they, they actually transferred 20,000 gallons that month. So if they're averaging 16,000 gallons a month, and in July, the week before the week after this alleged dumping that the pictures show, where'd the water go? Why is there, why is there more water being pumped to lakes at that point? Um, Secondly, the raw sewage in the overflow. Um, you and Mr. Sears both know that that was an angry campground that camper that did that. Actually, hold on. Before you make an assumption of what I know or I don't know, make sure you know or I don't. I know. Okay. Well, camp. I'm assuming. So I don't know exactly what happened. Okay, Mr. So, Sears said that's so, the case, and so I'll trust him for that. Okay. How about that. So, but it's still in the file as a violation. Yeah, because right. no matter what happens, that hold control on. is on the camper. Hold on. Right. The control. The. the the statute, which is 3701-26-04, subset K, subset 3, states, a camp operator shall not permit the dumpage of sewage. The definition of permit is to allow or give permission for somebody to do that. And I can guarantee you that that family did not give permission for anybody to dump sewage into the creek. Okay, I guess it's, it's insulting to me that you would insinuate that they would by your report. Listen, sir, do you represent this here? I do not. Okay. I'm a public citizen. Okay, I great. represent I represent my holding within the park. Right. My personal property that I right. stand to lose. Okay. Let me close by saying I'm angry and ashamed in the manner in which this public office is keeping its records and basically harassing a tax paying business within this community. Okay? And I fully intend to file a complaint with Mike DeWine's office. Feel free. Uh, so, I, again, I would suggest that if you do have legal questions on what legal is legal or not, I'd suggest that you actually 
feel free to contact us and we'll walk you through it all. Because again, some of the stuff uh, that we just said was inaccurate. But I think the important piece, well, because sewage, actually, the sewage violation has something to do with the campground rule that you just stated. That was the campground rule you just stated. And the problem with that is that the, the Ohio EPA regulates. That's, which, that's the campground rule that you cited on your report in your public record. Yes. So the problem is that, again, as I stated before, if you have a legal pumper, okay, which right now he has a legal pumper, which he hasn't had for many years, and which is what he, what got us to this point, right, it was illegal dumping, and maybe some of you have seen the truck go over the border and dump on that on that airline. So, so, the so. For so my point is, is that that piece of the puzzle is hopefully solved. I hope there's a real pumper now that's going to continue to pump. And, he's, and so far, we've got records that say that they've been pumping along. So I'm hoping that will, that will continue. It hasn't been the case for many years, since, and now it is. So I hope that continues. What's your and in terms of the, in terms of, county? excuse me? What's your precedent for enforcing a national county? Well, A, uh, the Ohio EPA is actually the main uh, influence on that, yeah. because if you illegally dump, it, it's actually an EPA violation, not a health department violation. So, but, but would that, that not fall on them to do the enforcement? Yeah, they are part of the investigation, that's correct. The only part we, we need to investigate is to make sure that actually sewage is being properly handled, which, is, again, it hasn't been for a long time, and I'm hoping that he can make all the changes that he needs to make, and that would be great. And, and again, if you're a person in the park that accidentally takes your blue boy and goes down there and dumps it somewhere you should, you should make sure that doesn't happen. And obviously, Mr. Sears doesn't want that to happen either. So that's, that's a good thing. I, other questions? Yes. In 2008, there was a complaint lodged about the raw sewage being dumped. Was the complaint from Ashland County, Lorain County, or Clark, or what? Actually, we, we got a call from uh, Greg Allen from the Ohio EPA. I'm sorry, Greg Allen? Chuck Allen, sorry, from the Ohio EPA. In 2010, it was actually a park person that actually put that complaint into the EPA. Again, those complaints went to the EPA, who has jurisdiction in both counties. And then they contacted us because we were the, that's where it was being produced was in our jurisdiction. It was another hand up there, yes. A lot of businesses around here are going to be affected if they shut the campground out. Grocery stores, restaurants, gas stations, whatever. Farmers are selling our produce. So you need to keep that in mind, too. Yeah. Don't get it too tough. Yeah, I know. i, I got to be honest with you. Yeah, we didn't. You think I like coming to a meeting like you know, having a meeting like this? I just want to have an open and honest discussion about it. This has been brewing for many years. This isn't just came out since this letter came out. Okay, and so getting to the point where we can at least get this fixed is is the most important piece. The other option could have been that we didn't notify, them. and frankly, this in May the park just closed, and then we'd have a screaming meeting later on, probably in June, saying why didn't you let us know? And so that's why we let you know. Okay, that's why we're going to have an open and honest discussion about what's going on. And, but I, I assure you, my board, who is made up, remember, the Board of Health is not part of the county. Okay, we're an independent board of private citizens, uh, people that live down in this community. Okay, and those people hire me to run the organization. And when we have a hearing, they're having those honest conversations. And we even have members of industry on our board to talk about those issues. Are we being reasonable? Are, is this the way to go? And so, again, we, we do really take that seriously. Yes? How did you know he was dumping over an extra county? Uh, well, the first time in 2008, there was evidence of toilet paper and a variety of other things in his truck. And so then there was some thought process, okay, well, you know, have you done that? And then we also have a variety of pictures from all that amount of time. What about a soil sample? That would prevent instead of just somebody, somebody else dumping their toilet out there. Yeah, I mean, if, if did we... Did you do a soil, soil sample? What's that? Did you do a soil sample? I did not do a soil sample, and I don't really plan to do that. Again, as this gentleman over here mentioned, the Ohio EPA actually is the one who will be uh, enforcing that. What I would suggest to you is, since we, we you even, I think you even have something in writing saying from Mr. Sears that says, I stopped doing that in 2015. Yeah. So, again, I, I could do a soil sample, but that seems like to be a waste of tax dollars, so we're not going to be doing that. I would say this. I'm okay if he fixes it from now on, okay? That's what matters, right? That's what we want. We want everything to be fixed from now on. What's that? You've made statements and implying that he has it. Well, he's, so far, he's got the pumper part. That's good. 
The second part is is the, so, the condition of the actual facilities. And so, I'm, again, he said in just a meeting just a week or two ago, after, after this letter came out, that he's planning on having a plan to get it all done. So if he closes all the bathrooms and brings in port power, port potties to meet the number of sites, which is... Right. Yeah. 16, yeah. 16 men, 16 women. Sure. Then he'd be fine, right? Yeah, he'd be fine. He and could you be guys would stop that. with your enforcement activity. Well, yeah, but the, you know, the big problem with that is in the long haul, that could cost them more money. So I, I would suggest well, if you wanted to do that in the short haul yeah, and then in the long haul, like a better than plan. Not having a license. What's that? It's going to cost them a whole lot less than not having a license. I, I agree. But, and I, one other point of this is I do have a letter here dated September 11, 2017 from the Ohio EPA that says, I wish to inform you the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency Division of Surface Water, Northeast Ohio District, has received your reference request and has no records responsive to the request from April 1, 2016 to August 30, 2017. Records housed in our office have been searched under the name and facility that you provided, which was Claremont Lakes and their address. And if you believe the records relating to this facility are different, hey, please contact us and we will continue a new search. And this is by Nicole Patella who is the Administrative Professional for District Operations. They show no record of any violations for surface water contamination of sewage in their office currently. Right, in the last year. Yeah, no yeah well, since April 2016, so yeah. two full seasons. Okay. So I, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, we all know that dumping occurred in the, right. back in the day, which sure. is fine. And By permit, it used to be permitted in Ashton County. Yeah, as long as you had an actual land application, it wasn't just dump it. It was actually there was actually a way well, to yeah, do it. But I mean, yeah, yeah, that was a tree farm, so it was agricultural, if you will. So, other questions, thoughts? Yes. In the month of October, we typically put a down payment the next season, yes. and then in April, I believe it's April, are required to pay in full. Okay. How comfortable are we all supposed to be with spending yeah. money in October? Right. So this goes back to what Mr. and Mrs. Sears uh, also said, said that, that uh, you know, I'm concerned about that, right? Because, yes. because again, if he doesn't have the money to fix it, then he can't fix it. And it's like this never-ending cycle. So I, I get that that's a problem. So how confident am I? I'm a glass full guy, right? So right. I, I'm confident that what he says he's going to do, he's going to do. Uh, there is a financial piece to it all, right? Yes. So is it going to be a temporary fix and then a long-term solution? Or is it going to be, they haven't proposed anything to us yet. Uh, they reassured us that they absolutely are going to propose a way to be, solve this. And we've talked to them about it, and, and I think that they will. You should, I hope, that Mr. Sears will share that with you in advance, and that will maybe alleviate your fear, okay. and then we can move forward. I, I think that's the best thing to do. I, 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 and again... You know, how do you do that? Do you put money into a, a escrow, or do you do? I don't know how you do all that. And is that the right thing to do or not the right thing to do? I think that's really where a park owner gets to kind of help, you know, like facilitate this. And so I'm hoping that that will be the case. What is your deadline for issuing the 2018 license? We don't issue it until May anyway. Right? Anyway. So it's okay if if you're closed from the 15th on, whether we suspend it or it's not suspended. Uh, the key will be, as long as everything's done and ready to go, whether yeah. that's with portable bathrooms or a, or a permanent solution, as long as it's all done and ready to go May 1st, we're good. Yeah. What's, what's the appeal process? If the board suspends the license, then there is an appeal process. And you can actually look at that same code you'll be able to see. Uh, if, the board, if the board revokes the license in May, Okay, because they still, or just keeps it suspended until such time as you fix everything. Then again, you know, uh, if, if they were to revoke the license, then you would have to start the process all over again, which we don't want to do that either, because then he has to do plan review, he has to do all kinds of stuff, and we don't want that. I'd rather it just be, as long as you get everything done, you can open it back up again. And that's what we've explained to the Sears to say, this is what we want to see happen. Again, we, uh, the reason I gave you that track record of everything is because we've gotten some set comments of, oh, we're going to do it now. We're going to do it now, and it just hasn't happened. So it's gotten to the point where the board's now looking at me saying, how long are we going to buy into this before we finally say enough's enough? And so that's where we are. That's why we're even at this spot. As long as they put the plan together and deliver, everything will go on fine. And again, there's other small little things at the park. I'm sorry. There's other small little things at the park. 
again, we don't care about the small little things. Get them fixed year to year. That's not a big deal. But when you've got sewage mm -hmm. that's not being treated right, that's not okay. Yeah. Yes. I have a question. I had heard through the rumor mill that they had to put in their own, like, sanitation, like, a, not a septic tank or whatever. Like a package plan or something? Yeah. Um, what do you, like your house, you had to have a septic tank then or was something else now. It's a mountain yeah, thing. Sure. Aeration. Uh -huh. Is that necessary, or is it just to put something in the ground under the showers and the bathrooms that can be pumped out? So right now you have a holding tanks. That's the system that you have. And as long as you have a management plan, how are you going to hold that? In other words, you have a pumper that comes out and pumps it. Takes okay, but it. What type of tank is necessary? Uh, it's actually, see, that's one of the problems. Is because you got these old tanks, yeah, you, you really need a poured, a poured concrete then. tank is what you need, okay, which is, is like a MAC tank, like you do for a septic tank, that kind, except they're bigger. And so you need something like that. They can do polyester, all kinds of new, new, okay. new technology. The other, they don't the other need the actual sanitation treatment system. So, treatment yeah, system. so this is the other option they have, is to okay. approach the EPA to say, I want to have a package plant that handles the whole thing and run like a sewer line through the whole place, and you could all just put your hoses in the sewer line and have a package plant. Again, that's expensive. You're talking hundreds of thousand dollars to put that big. So that's the reason they only put them in for really big scenarios. So right? it's not necessary, though. No, if not necessary. Have... Here's what's necessary. Sewage that is produced at the park has to be treated properly. That's it. How that comes about happening so is... So lakes drove, drove through and dumped everybody's camp around site, it would be fun. If yeah. If you're in your camper on your onboard camp. Actually, that's there's a lot of campsites that actually have an outside vendor comes in and pumps your tank, and you have an independent contract with that outside vendor to come in and do that, so and then they go in and do it. That. Or the camp does it themselves. There's a lot of variety of ways that this is handled in most campsites. Again, you know, I, I, I think we can get to the solution. The problem is there needs to get to a solution, and that's that's kind of where we are today. Other questions? Yes? Just to get my head straight, you need a licensed hauler to haul a master dump tank to the school that's right. But you don't have to be licensed to build a trailer and yeah. take it to the national tank. Right. So he could use his current unlicensed one to take care of all that and put it in a storage tank. And then but once it leaves the site, and actually a sanitary sewer plant will never accept one from an unlicensed vendor. Okay? So it's got to be a pump truck. And so that's actually what was the plan this year. But then when he started pumping the stuff into some of these old old uh, containers, that they, they couldn't hold it. Yes. So are you allowed to... Sure. I, you mean like right, right now you're going to do some examples? Right. Okay, so, so there's and a couple. Your assumption of these tanks so they can tell us what has to be done and what has to be fixed. Right. So so when you think about wastewater, okay, your Iowa EPA doesn't allow tanks like our, you currently have constructed. Uh, they've been grandfathered for a long time. As long as they're not falling apart, then they let them be grandfathered. So if, they, if you're going to have a holding tank, it needs to be a poured concrete tank or a polyester tank that's leak-proof, okay, and they have like a little, they have a little float alarm and all, you know, that kind of thing. And then they're pumped out by a, by a regular uh, uh, licensed hauler. So and that are you saying there. each one of the showers and bathrooms has to have these things? So my, well, actually, probably. Uh, there, are, there is one that was, we don't know for sure how, what condition it is because we couldn't really see, as you mentioned before, we couldn't really see the back and whether it's cracking or not. But they're probably all made of the same material, I would assume. So when he, they applied to the EPA to say, hey, we want to keep a holding tank thing, we're going to put these new ones in, but we want to keep this old one, the EPA is going to say, well, okay, but what is that old one made of? So I assume it's, prob it's not a very good assumption to say that that'll work just because so we can't see it. Well, I'm assuming the EPA won't say no, because I deal with the EPA a lot, and they say no a hell of a lot more than I say no. Yeah, but I would say this. So that's one option. Another option would be, again, do they do they uh, uh, have one, do you get rid of some of the your, your your multiple buildings and have one big one, and have one big tank? I mean, that's a possibility. There's a lot of other possibilities to do that. Or does it go the temporary route, where you have... These mobile, they, they have some really nice these mobile shower units and mobile bathrooms now. Well, they came to you and said, we're going to have these mobiles in until we fix ours. Yeah, they can do that. regular one, you would give them the license anyway. 
Absolutely, as long as they're handled. They just can't use those other ones. And, so, and, and as long as they're just using it, they'll be fine. The problem there, the long-term expense there, is you've got to have pumps so often, right? So, again, you know, those are the decisions they've got to make as campground owners to say, this is the best way to handle this in the short term and the long term. And we're agreeable. As long as the sewage is being handled, we're fine. Okay, that's the big key. You consider yes. gray water sewage? Gray water also has to be handled, so yes. Most of your soaps are biodegradable. What's that? French Most of your soaps are bio biodegradable. What's wrong with the French tank? I'd love to say that was legal, but uh, EPA would tell me I'm not allowed to say that. So uh, I would suggest that a lot of farmland has that same scenario going on. But, and again, and as far as our rules go, that's fine, but that's not, the EPA regulates that and gray water has to be treated. That's the key. Yes? If uh, construction plans for, let's just say, for a new restaurant were provided, who, who, would, who would approve those plans? And where would, you know, be in a, I mean, Lorraine, you know, Lorraine County, you get out here, you know, there's not a lot of inspections and whatnot. I think the only inspection we have nowadays is septic, you know, but once you get out this way, I mean, who, who would, would do the inspection, who would approve the plans if something like that was so? Happen. So, the plans, uh, the EPA would approve the plans that are associated with the how it, would, how it would be held. As far as like the construction, you're not, you don't have a building department out here, so that's not going to be inspected, and we won't be approving that. Either. So, if a drawing is per, let's just say a drawing is provided for the construction of a new restroom, like with residential, then I mean. Typically, residentially, we would just deal with the health department, and the health department would say, how many bedrooms do you have? Why are you trying to call that office, not a bedroom? And, you know, right, right, right. Yeah, that thing. stuff. But, sure. you know, they would say, all right, now you need an aeration tank, an amount system, a good pump, da 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 So in the event, let's just say that the plans for a new restroom were, pro were provided, and would the, would the health department or EPA at that point say, okay, this restroom has, you know, a shower and two urinals, the capacity that we're going to require is a 3,000 gallon holding yep. tank. This is how we want the whole thing. Yep. And it would be a pretty much be the Yep, and how EPA would take care of that piece. We'd even have to guide through it because we have a whole guidance document from the EPA that tells you how many. So we'd help them with how much um, gallons per day. And then if you wanted to do a separate holding tank where you pump your, your guys' stuff and put it into there, they'd have recommendations for what size that should be in the construction. And again, there'd be a written you know piece of Every Tuesday at you know two, I'm going to pump everybody's tank. I'm going to dump it in here, and once a month or once every other month or whatever, someone's going to pick it up. That would all be outlined all out. Is that a is that a is that an amendment to the plan, or is that an entire plan review? Does it open up the whole campground for an entire plan review? No, because it's a different plan, right? It's not the campground plan. It's an actual. It's for it's a wastewater treatment plan for the Ohio EPA. So no, you wouldn't have to worry about that. As far as we're concerned, as long as he meets those minimums that you you uh, know about with uh, per, per, every, you know how many per camper, we're good. It'll be fine. Again, the, another important piece, and I know Don's here, is this needs to get moving, right? Because yeah. to be honest yes. with you, when we do plan review for you know we're you know we do it in the month at, at the at the most. EPA, uh, I don't know how many times you guys dealt with EPA, but they're not exactly the fastest all the time on this. So we need to get moving because it, what would happen is if, let's say, he waits all the way to March to do that and says, okay, now here's my plan, EPA, and they're like, okay, we'll get back to you in August. Well, now you got to do temporary, right? He's got to have mold, you know, he's got to have uh, porta potties and stuff like that all the way to August. That's going to cost a ton of money. So again, it's all about getting this process moving so that you guys can not need to be worrying about this in, in May. I mean, ultimately, yes. ultimately, everybody sitting in this room has their own bathroom and shower in their camper, pretty much. Right. I don't know that there's anybody in here that doesn't have a shower and a bathroom in their camper. Mine's completely tore off right now. Most of the time. And again, most of the time, yeah, just to let you know, most of the time in parks, most of or in camps, most of the time, it's the weekend people that are using those, right? And you guys are not. And that's fine. But again, and he doesn't have to provide showers. He could just do porta pots only, but he does have to have porta pots for you, even though you have one in your own. That you're still counted as the number. So, but again, that's not the difference between ten and twelve. To be honest, it's the and pumping do, that costs the money. And how do other campgrounds in Lorraine County get away with having locked doors with keypads on their restrooms? Uh -huh. I don't. I don't know if you check in and they give you a little key. They yeah, give you the code or what? Weekenders, they don't give it to seasonals because seasonals have units on their campers and they don't want seasonals using them. And they probably yeah. They probably want to charge yeah. I mean, they don't legally have to, as long as they have them. 
But we're counted in the number of the campground and have to have so many restrooms. Yeah, that's the way it is. Yeah. And again, if they want to create that rule so that they get you to use it less and, and they still provide a way for you to get pumped and, and have that sewage taken away, right, then they can do that. That's, yes, anything else? Any other questions? Yes. Specification on the uh, wife spreader on your uh, water end feed. I know, I know you guys had Don put backflow preventer on all the water tickets. Yeah, I wish I could come up with your number right off the top of my head. Uh, what I'm saying is if I run a, if I run a post from that post over my camper, put a Y on, put a backflow preventer on the other part of the Y with my garden hose on there, is that a problem with that? As long as it shouldn't be. It should be only once it comes out of the supply. Right. That's the key. As long as you got one before the supply, it should be okay. Right ahead. Right ahead. <laughs> yeah, as long as you got one second. I mean, backflow is all about one thing, right? You don't want a puddle of water getting sucked back into the clean water supply. That's it. So as long as somewhere you got that, you could you could have that and then have 30 hoses come out. But really, as long as that, that was done. Yes. My understanding was that the Y's are illegal. I guess the question I would ask you. can't have the Y's on the backflow. Before the backflow. Yeah, if you had a Y and then you had a backflow and the other one didn't have a backflow, that's a problem. No, if you have the Y upstream, you're fine. Yeah, that's not good. So, if you have a backflow device and then the Y, it's not going Yep, you're good. Yes, yeah, yeah, so other questions? Yes. Again, you guys are meeting with Don and going over whatever it is going to be next month. Yeah, so, so our next board meeting is in October, okay, which is conveniently right before the season ends, right? And so so if the board's going to take an action, they'll either do it in that October or they'll wait until the spring. But either way, Don and his attorney have said that they're going to come up with a plan for what they're going to do. So I assume they're going to have that plan before that day. Otherwise, the board's going to say, not only are you out of compliance, you don't even have a plan for getting in compliance, in which case they probably would suspend the license. So again, we'll see. that's the idea. So you should have it before the end of the season. As far as I'm concerned, you could have it tomorrow. It, 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 really, this is in Don's lap uh, to try to come up with. This is exactly what I'm going to do. In the meeting, he talked about you know create maybe building a new bathroom style area. Uh, he talked about a few different. Uh, we talked about a lot of the options we're talking about here today. Ultimately, I can't decide what he's going to do. Right? It's got to be the park owner that makes the decision on what to do. So, and then I suggest he share it with all of you, so you guys are comfortable. Did I have you first? Or you first? Or okay, go ahead. Worst case scenario, if the park were not allowed to open next year, what would us as residents, what would our rights be to access the property to remove our trailers? Right. So although I can't give you legal information, I would suggest to you that there should be no reason why you couldn't access that property. Um, uh, I don't anticipate Don would, you know, stop me from doing that. If, if you did go on that, you would have, you should have every legal right to do that. I'm not an attorney, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt a little bit, but, yeah, that would be the case. It should be. <laughs> right, that could be. Yeah, yes. Is there any way Don could come up here and speak? I asked Don if he'd like to come up. Don, would you like to come up? I know that's putting you on the spot. You don't want to. Okay. Yeah, he's, his voice has been bothering him, so. Uh, I will say this. That's, again, between you guys and Don to work all this out and to make sure you're confident, I think that's great. I, I, that, that'd be great. But the plan has to be that these places that are falling apart are no longer used, and there's some way to properly take care of the sewage. And as long as that happens, you'll be okay. Yes? Yes. Okay. This lady back here said they, they make payments, okay? What about the people that's paid ahead for 2018, okay? And you have a park model. This, that's not ample time to get out. Right. Yeah. I, I'm with you. And you can't move it. I'm with you. And, and, and again, the reason we try to get a hold of you is, is early That's as we did. That's not the ample time, though. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. I, I would say I would agree with you that, that we try to give as much as we could. Frankly, honestly, when he came in in May and said he was going to do it, we were thinking it was going to be over. But it didn't actually happen. So we got to the point where it was like, okay, we, we have to start letting people know. Okay. So. Yeah, but uh, you're paid in half. You're not making. You got 10% discount, which is fair, okay, but somebody knew about this before then. Yeah, so I, I hate to say this the way I'm going to, but I'm going to have to, and that is, if you paid ahead, that's between you and Don as to how that works out. And I hope it works out the best for both. 
I hope it works out that now the park opens, he gets everything done, and everything's great. If we as managers, we love Flower Marlix. I, I, it's a beautiful place. I, 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 I would be, someone mentioned about the businesses, I would be extremely disappointed if, it, if things don't get worked out. I, it's not, I'm not loving to do this, trust me. But the problem is I also have my board look at me going, do you realize that people could, some kid could drown in one of these, in one of these scenarios? And, I mean, think about that for a minute. So again, I'm in that spot where I'm trying to do the best on both for both, and so I'm, I'm willing to give Don as much chance as he can, and I'm hoping it will open in, on May 1st, and, I'm, and I'll try to keep you guys informed as best we can. I would say this, as we get stuff, if you don't get enough information and you, you want anything we have, just contact us. Jill, has a, Jill and uh, Bob Ford have a bunch of cards up here. You can take one and contact them at any time. And whatever we have in terms of the agreement and what's going to happen move forward, we'll be happy to send it to you. Okay? So at least you have a better chance of, of knowing. Yes? I'm trying to understand. Are you saying we're going to know in October if they're going to be suspended or not? No. Here's what I'll know. Here's what I can tell you. I'll know, yeah, we'll know in October if the board said, frankly, it doesn't matter that much because we're not suspending you until after the season's over. So if we suspended the license that, you know, and you had to get something done before you opened in May, or we waited and suspended a month in March because nothing got done, it's virtually the same thing to you. The well, difference is... Well, not really. I'm going to know if I need to get my camera out there in October for suspending. Well, except that if I suspend their license but they have a plan to fix it all and it gets fixed in March, you're going to be fine. Whereas if we don't suspend it and say, well, we're not going to suspend it till March, but you better get it all done, and they don't get it done, it's the same, it's kind of the same scenario. My board is, uh, you know, they were kind of taken aback a little bit. They are like, how many, they asked me multiple times, how many residents are we talking about? I said, there is a lot of residents out there, and there are going to be a lot of folks in a bad spot if we have to close this place. And again, they asked me, what do you think the likelihood that they're going to come in here with a good plan and they're going to execute it? And I said, I think the likelihood they're going to come in with a good plan. I hope that they're going to execute it. And those are the two pieces of the puzzle. So again, that's kind of between Don and you guys to say, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to happen. And then again, you can contact us throughout time if there's like three or four things he's doing along the way and you want to know, hey, it's uh, December, did he... Did he knock down the one building, or did he start construction, or did he get his plan in, or whatever. As long as we can have those, then I think he can let you know that, hey, I met this, I met this, I met this, I'm on my way, we're in good shape. Yes? So from your letter dated May 15th, 2017, which was close to meeting you had in May with Don about his plan. Okay. Um, the only thing on here that hasn't been handled, as far as I can see, is the gate and hold by the, the restroom facilities. This is a safety hazard that needs to be addressed immediately. You indicate you've been waiting for weather and the area is roped off. So it, 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 reference, it references Blake Sanitation being contracted. Um, it references the holding tanks used, being used for overflows being piped out. Where, where, we, hope, we hope that that's going to continue to be, you know, Blake is going to continue to work, right? So we, that we think we have that one solved, right? Okay. The only problem is the, the, the condition of the actual holding tanks themselves. And so does he put a new one in, or does he have a, so more of a temporary scenario? So now that's the only problem you're well, seeing is the holding tank. It's really, honestly, it's all about sewage. That's it. I get it. But now we're, you're talking about a new instance of a new problem that you've identified. So last year it was all of these things. He corrected them short of one. Now you have this issue of, well, we think the tanks are leaking. Should he not be afforded enough time to create a new plan to fix those issues as well? He it, and he will be. Well, a he's going to be. Get, we're going to give him plenty of time to fix this stuff. The, the problem is with the ones that are, you know, falling apart. What is he going to do in the meantime for sewage? That's the key. And so if he could do something, and again, as I mentioned before, if he wants to do something temporarily until he can get some other construction, great, no problem. We have no problem with that. As long as the sewage is being treated properly, we're good. And again, you know. I get that he plugged the one hole for the one for the one piece, but you know what's he going to do with that building over time, right? And is he going to does he is he going to have another one? And if he do, if he has a shower unit, it has to work, it has to work properly. If he doesn't want to have it, that's okay too. Okay, so so I'm hoping it's going to get all fixed for that for that reason. Yes. The showers and the holding tanks and all that, the actual construction have to be done by a licensed contractor. 
Yeah, though they're well, you can really can't get a board tank from anybody but a license contract. You really gotta look at Norwalk on Creek or something like that. But yes, they'll they'll uh, they'll be a requirement that that now he could do it himself, but I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, so then they can do everything but install the tank and everything we're not right. Yeah, who can do the construction, <laughs> especially when you're in a scenario where you don't have a building department that's gonna require you to do anything in particular, uh, you probably can do that. Uh, again, the EPA is going to be the, the EPA cares about what's the tank look like, what's the what's the what you know do they have? Yeah. Yep. You could have a barn raising at the. Uh, you guys could have a barn raising. <laughs> uh, again, you know, as that moves forward, we're all ears and, and we're all interested in helping as best we can. Yes. There was a rumor that if you closing down, and you don't let them open in May. He won't be able to open again later. Is that true? I have no idea. You mean from us? No. Because so we would only suspend the here. Down. It depends. It depends if they get everything fixed and reopened? Yeah. So, after May. so what we would do is suspend his license until such time as he makes the improvements. As soon as he does, he's back open again. Okay. The problem is in May is when you issue the new license. Right. And so he's not going to get a new license until, until he gets everything done. So that's the reason why we would suspend instead of revoke a license. Because if you revoke a license now, the question is, does he have to, does he have to do plan review or do anything like that? So that's that's that would be the plan. Is we would only look at a suspension until he gets things fixed. Yes. Any, anybody else? Not bad. Only an hour. Yes. I just, I mean, I understand everything you said, but I just want to clarify once again. So basically, we still really don't know which way this is going to go from what you're telling me. Okay. From what I'm understanding, we really won't have the final say until May 1st. So basically, we're just going to have to wait it out and see if actually everything is going to get done and the license is going to stay and the camp's going to open. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, I just so here's the scenario. That, yeah, so here's the scenario. And what she, what she was asking was, do we really know, are we really going to know until May? If Mr. Sears and his attorney and whoever else come in and they have a legitimate plan to fix this, and it's going to take until next spring, then you will not know until he actually does it. And then if he actually does it, he'll open. And if he actually doesn't do it, then he won't. So yes, you're right. If, uh, if, he, if he, in the next month, doesn't come up with even an idea and just says, yeah, it's not doing it, then you know he's not going to do it. Right? Cause he's, again, planning this out is the big key. Right? And so, again, he's reassured us that he's going to do it. And uh, his attorney has, so I'm hoping that that's going to be the case. We'll get a good plan. We'll show it to you. Here's the time frame to be able to see progress. But yeah, you, you, are you asking if you could in May, if he, if nothing gets done, and then now you're stuck saying, where's, where's, where am I going to move my, my thing to the next campsite? That could be it. That's a legitimate possibility. So if they bring a plan to you guys, and you're okay with the plan, say May 1st comes around. Sure. Until they're finished. Yeah, sure. He could, as long so as he provides get, proper sewage treatment, he can do it. Yep. So you would give him the license. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As long as yeah. that's the key. Until it was totally finished. Sure. Yeah. Are you going to be yeah. affected? Yeah. The insurance yeah. on my trailer is due January, January first. Yeah. So that's kind of iffy, iffy. Yeah. Uh, and I have to have insurance. I know I could be a glasses all half full kind of person, but that's kind of up to you. She was saying that her insurance is due January 1st, and so should she pay your insurance? <laughs> I can tell you that I think it's going to happen, but again, I wouldn't be here if I was 100% positive, right? I wouldn't be holding this meeting. It's not like I'm dying to hang out and kind of tune out that you're not all these people. Yes. Is there somebody else who you don't be infected? Uh, if he's doing construction, then we'll stop out. If he's not doing anything, then no, we won't be. We won't be there. So, yeah. Other questions, thoughts? So again, we're hanging out here for a little while. After, if you want to have an individual conversation, there are cards up here. If you want to take one, and again, we'll try to keep you informed. Just do me a favor. If you're if you want information, contact us. It makes our life easier. It's hard for us to contact all of you, especially in the off season. So if you have, if you want information, contact us and we'll get it to you. Okay? Can we email you? You can email. There's an email right on here. Okay? Yes. I want to thank you for bringing this to our attention and 
you're doing your job. You're trying to help, and I think you did a good job. Thank you. And again, we'll keep working with you. Okay, so uh, please stop by, and uh, thanks for coming. Thank you.